Thanks, Marisa. Welcome to the 2022 Minnesota Adult Education State Update. And our theme this year is Revitalize, and we'll dive into that in a little bit. Let's start by introducing our Minnesota Department of Education staff, our adult education team. I'm, gonna, I'm going to give each person a chance to uh, introduce themselves. I'll kick us off. My name is Brad Haskamp and my role is State Adult Education Director and Team Supervisor. My pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, many of you can feel free to ask me about uh, any adult education policies, the 2021-22 additional ABE funding that we've had available, and any accountability issues and expectations uh, questions you have. I've been working um, as part of the adult education team at the Minnesota Department of Education since 2010, and just kind of my summer note is I've been spending many weekends going up to central and northern Minnesota, helping take care of some storm damage to our, to our property um, with family. Luckily, no building damage, but we've been doing a lot of chopping of trees, and I've become really good at, at uh, chopping up firewood. So that's been, that's been my uh, summer activity. I'm going to turn it over to Neil. Hello, um, my name is Neil Allard. Um, my pronouns are they, them. Um, I'm the Records, Communications, and Administrative Support Specialist. Um, if you're emailing me, only email me directly about um, contact list changes and who to contact when you're unsure um, who else on the team to contact. There's a secret slide later with more information. I'll be back. Um, I've been at MDE since 2021, and um, I have a little cat who usually is around, but is suspiciously missing at the moment. So she may she may make an appearance later. Good morning, everyone. My name is Julie Denko. I'm the transition specialist. You can ask me about the Integrated English Literacy and Civics Education Grant. You can ask me about the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act um, guidance and um, also anything transitions to employment, training, or post-secondary. I've been at the Department of Ed since 2010, and what I've been enjoying is watching the day lilies bloom in my garden, which I bid on at the last Summer Institute that we had in person. And I will pass it on to Astrid. Good morning, everyone. I am Astrid Leiden, and I am the professional development specialist on our team. My pronouns are she, her, hers. You can contact me with any questions about adult ed professional development opportunities or support around professional development in your local programs. I've been with our team since 2006, and a highlight of my summer was going whale watching in Cape Cod and seeing hundreds of humpback whales bubble net feeding. A pretty uh, exciting experience for me. There, I'm Brandy Logan. I'm actually one of the newest uh, team members to Minnesota Department with Adult Ed. I go by she, her, hers. And you can ask me anything about high school equivalency services. So that includes GED as well as our new high set that we are rolling out for the state this year and anything to do with accountability. Uh, I've been with MDE since the summer of 2022. So <laughs> um, a little quick note is I am a Georgia transplant just coming here and I'm new to the state and my summer consisted of hotels and road trips and wandering the state. I've been to Can Can Wonderland and down south towards the lakes. I've gone to catch a couple of baseball games as you can see and just seeing such amazing sights throughout the state. I'm loving it. I'm gonna turn it over to Jody. Thanks, Brandy. Um, I'm Jody. I am the program quality specialist on our MDE team. My pronouns are she, her. You can ask me about the annual application and the tables that's due in June, uh, five-year narratives, and also about standard adult diploma. I've been on the team since 2016, and I'm kind of appreciative to not be the uh, junior member anymore. Now there's a couple of new folks since me. Um, a summer highlight for me, just a couple of weeks ago, I took a nice trip up to the UP um, and saw one of the most brilliant sunsets I have seen for a long time over the lake. So that's a picture of that. 
And I'm going to pass it on maybe to Sally or maybe back to Brad. Yep. Um, hello. Uh, we are excited that we have another new person that is working with our team. Uh, this is Sally Reynolds. Uh, Sally is the Career and College Success Division Director, or CCSD Director. And this director position oversees our adult education team, uh, the Career and Technical Education, or CTE team, as well as high school initiatives at MDE. Paula Palmer was formerly in this position, and uh, Paula retired this uh, just this summer, so Sally has stepped in into this role. And Sally originally came from with a background in alternative programs. Programs. Sally's pronouns are she, her, hers. Sally has been at the Minnesota Department of Education since 2017. And Sally, or Sally's had a great summer. Uh, she had grand baby number six and was able to go on lots of road trips to visit family. So we're excited to have Sally Reynolds as part of our uh, helping with our team as well. And then Neil, do you want to talk about our team inbox? Yes, indeed, I am back again. Um, so our um, shared MDE inbox, the email address is mde.abe at state.mn.us. So that's where you will send any request for GED or HSE, that's high school equivalency, records requests, verifications, age waivers, other HSE questions, requests. Um, rather than sending it to any individual's inbox, um, because as a team, multiple of us have access to it. So we uh, will be able to make sure that things get taken care of for you. Um, and this, it is a relatively um, new thing having everything sent there. So if it gets sent to someone else, it will still get taken care of, but do try to send it there. Um, turnaround time can be five to seven business days, but we try to keep it to less as best we can. Thank you, Neil. And thanks. Um, we're very happy with this uh, MDE AD in, uh, team inbox and all, all of your diligent work with that, uh, making sure that our records get verified, uh, get sent, uh, verifications go out, and folks get uh, are able to accept those jobs and move on to post-secondary. So thank you, Neil, with that work. So as you can see with our team, we have a couple new people on the team with Neil and with Brandy over the past year. And we have yet another person that we're in the process of hiring. Um, we are hiring an adult education grants, records, and administrative support specialist position. And, uh, and so we're excited to have that position uh, become fully staffed here, hopefully in the near future. And then that will mean we will be fully staffed as a team for the first time in more than two years. Wow, um, it will be um, very exciting. But I also want to introduce and welcome all of you who may be new to the adult education field or are maybe in new positions in adult education this year. So if you are new to the field or if you have a new position this year, please well, um, introduce yourself in the chat with your name, your program and your role in the program. We are so excited to have you join us. And we uh, also wanna make sure if you are new to the field that you check out uh, ABE Foundations. And there is ABE Foundations training that can be an online course or a variety of webinars and at sometimes uh, even in-person sessions. And Marisa has shared out in the chat a link to check out ABE Foundations. So we're excited for you to check out that resource, such an important resource to get to know adult education and how our system works. Oh, I'm seeing some new folks. Thank you for introducing yourselves. Uh, it's so good to see go so good to see you. So happy to have you part of the adult education system. It's a really exciting and collaborative system and you get to see so much positive change and that is exciting. Now let's take a moment to look back at the last year. 2021-22 has been yet another year filled with many successes and many challenges. Uh, we've seen you working hard in your programs and across staff to reach students, to engage students, and to really serve your communities. Thank you for all of that wonderful work, such essential work. You are adult education and you are why adult education succeeds. Thank you so much for all of your efforts and for your persistence and your passion in, with our adult education work. Jody, I'm gonna turn it over to you. 
Thanks, Brad. So we wanted to get started um, today by kind of grounding us in some numbers and some data about this last year and uh, kind of where we are at as a statewide system at the moment. So uh, here on this slide is some data about program year 2021-2022, which is the year that has now ended, the most recent year that ended. So uh, in terms of the number of students that we served across the state, it was a little over 41,000. And, and the number of contact hours that those students generated was about 2.7 million. So if you look at the other numbers on this slide, you can get a sense of uh, how that compares to where we were before. Um, the numbers from 1920, now keep in mind, remember that was the year that was mostly unaffected by COVID. That was sort of the old normal, right? The old world um, before everything changed. Uh, so you will notice those numbers were quite a bit higher, about 54,000 students and about 4 million contact hours. And then the year in between the 2021 year, which was the very intense, lots of, uh, you know, lots of shutdowns and lots of restrictions and things, there was a significant dip down in those numbers in that year, about 38,000 students and about 2.2 million hours. So what we can see for 21-22 is that the trend is back up, uh, but we are not back to old normal before COVID. And maybe at this point, uh, maybe we won't be, hard to say for sure. On, on the next slide, Brad, there's a little more, another visual that uh, to kind of help you uh, visualize uh, what this past year looked like in comparison to the other years before it. So this chart shows us the trends in terms of student contact hours month by month um, for the previous three program years. So if you take a look at that red line, that is the old normal. Um, that is back when we had more than 4 million contact hours in a year. And you'll see that red line in February of 2020 takes a sharp nosedive, right? That is the point at which the pandemic had drastic impact on all of us and, our, and everybody, and our, including our statewide adult ed system. Then if you look at the green line, that green line is 2021. So that was that year that was very much impacted by COVID and shutdowns and a lot of uncertainty. Um, so obviously that was way below the red line. And this most recent year that ended the 2021, 2022 year is the purple or blue purple line. And you'll see it falls in the middle but it definitely looks a lot more similar to the green line than it does to the red line. So that gives you a good sense of sort of where our statewide system is at. We're certainly um, increasing in students and hours, but, but we are not back to where we were before the pandemic in terms of the number of students and the number of hours. However, what we want you to keep in mind and we, what we want you to know is if we look at the trend lines in terms of how much funding we have available for our system, um, that, that dip in students and hours did not result in a dip in funding. So our funding has really been steady for the last, so the numbers on this slide show you that for the last three years, uh, we have had really level um, or slightly increased amounts of both state and federal funding. So starting in 2021, and then in the middle of this slide, you see those figures for 21-22. And in, um, you will remember in 21-22, we did have a one-time extra pot of funding of 9.8 million. Um, we don't anticipate having that again, but what we are looking at currently for this year, the current year that we are in, we've got about $52 million of state funding for our system and $6 million of federal um, funding for our system. So just note that while the number of students, the number of contact hours has gone down, the, number, the amount of funding that we have for the system remains steady. So on the next slide, well, a couple of things that we just want you as sort of starting points and um, a, a sense of where we are at right now, a couple of things to remind you of. We anticipate that this trend in terms of funding will remain the same for next year. We anticipate that total funding for our statewide system will be level for 23-24. So that's this upcoming 
fiscal year. We recognize that level funding because of inflation, because uh, teachers need raises and because buildings cost more over time, uh, we recognize that level funding can feel like, logistically speaking, like decreased funding. So that, that is true. We also though um, want to recognize that for this upcoming year, it may be a little bit more difficult to predict funding for each consortium and how the division of our statewide pot of funding is going to play out because we are now back in the scenario where we will be using this year's contact hours to distribute aid for next fiscal year. We want you to know that our MDE team is working together with Literacy Action Network or LAN um, to really provide information over the course of this year to help you all know as much as you can and make the best sort of predictions and choices that you can this year uh, when thinking about next year. And we just want to reiterate that contact hours are really important. But ultimately, what is the most important part in running your program is your students' educational goals and supporting those goals. And we believe that as you are making, uh, as you are building quality programming and offering high quality services to the folks in your communities who are eligible for those services, the contact hours will follow. So just a little bit of a word of encouragement about, we know there's some uncertainty about contact hours currently this year and how many contact hours will we get and what will our funding look like? We want you to know that we understand that concern and our team and LAN will be doing our best over the upcoming year to uh, support you around those concerns. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jody. Uh, great information. And now let's share some Minnesota adult education news. We'll start by setting the scene of our adult education system. Overall in our system, we have uh, 38 different grantees called adult education or ABE consortia statewide representing all school districts and many other uh, members. There are more than 100 providers providing adult education services around the state at, of our, at an estimated 300 uh, different programming sites. And those could be in schools, in nonprofit organizations, correctional facilities, tribal nations, post-secondary institutions, career force centers, libraries, workplaces, many other locations, as well as online, whether that's uh, formal distance learning platforms or virtual classes through Zoom or Google Meet. Wow, a lot of services happening around the state. And we do have some statewide targets. Speaking of uh, student success that Jody was talking about, we do have some statewide targets that we are expected to, to meet or exceed. And these targets are annual performance goals that are set with the US Department of Education for our statewide adult education system. These targets, you'll notice, have changed significantly because of the COVID-related impact on our programming. So the one target that I really want to make sure that we share today um, is our measurable skill goal uh, or measurable skill gain target or MSG target. So from July 2022 to June 2023, uh, our target for measurable skill gains is 27.5%. That means we hope and expect that at least 27.5% of our participants, those are adult education students with 12 or more hours, will make a measurable skill gain. This can be through pre and post testing with, the, with TABE, CASAs, or BEST Plus. This could be by earning a diploma or a high school equivalency diploma. Um, so make sure that you are pre and post testing all of your ABE students. This is, uh, we're increasing the importance of our targets this year. You'll note though that this 27.5% is much lower than our target last year of 44%. And that's because of the COVID related impacts. So I'm hoping that as a system, we can not only meet, but exceed those targets. And in the chat, you'll see that there's a link if you want to learn more about these targets and all the other targets that we have. Uh, you can see a link to our mnabe.org website to learn more. So now I'm going to turn it over to Brandy. Hi there. So with high school equivalency, you might start seeing these, this acronym coming around HSC. And what we're wanting to let people know is that we are about to have two high school equivalency testing opportunities. 
for our students here in the state of Minnesota. So right now we currently offer GED testing, but with new high set coming out, we're going to have much more uh, availability for students. So we want to start veering away from we are only a GED uh, state. We are no longer a GED state. We are GED and high set. And so you might see that HSE coming around. Next slide, please. So we wanna talk about our GED subsidy. Um, the code is up and running and has been reactivated. So if you do not know that, uh, the testers can get $10 off the first time that they take a subject test. So that can be a maximum of $40 off the entire battery. And then we will be working on an equal subsidy for the high set as well. So keep an eye out for that too. Next slide, please. So implementation, let's get a little bit more into how the high set is gonna roll out for our state. Recently, there has been vouchers distributed and the vouchers that we speak about are official practice test vouchers, which we'll speak on the next slide. Once we, uh, after the vouchers, we've also have a series of webinars that are going to be given throughout the month of September and October to really take a deeper look into high set itself. We are in getting input and data from advisory teams as well as target groups have taken a couple of the practice tests to give us their input on what it looks like. Of course, our fall regionals, we're going to be having deeper sessions of questions and concerns as well as what the high set looks like. And of course, Atlas is gonna be working with a series of articles being published. And then our pilot begins on October 3rd. And so when I mean our pilot, we have selected around 10 to 12 testing centers throughout the state, and they are going to be giving the, the high set test in their centers. And the goal is, is for us to collect as much information between then and the beginning of the new year and to really learn the pros and cons and the best practices. So then that way we can start to open high set to the entire state and let more testing centers uh, bring out the high set test. Next slide, please. All right, those vouchers that we spoke of, Atlas purchased official practice test vouchers are those OPTs, and that is for all adult basic education staff in the state of Minnesota. We will have vouchers available for your students as well, but we're not distributing those to anyone because there's no test available currently. What our goal is, is that we want to get some information from you in the classroom, your instructors, your administration, anyone that's willing to really take a deep look and then tell us what you think. We know that it starts in the classroom and that when our teachers approve of something, it really set, uh, takes flight. If you have not gotten that email for an OPT voucher, make sure you're emailing your consortium manager because they went out to them to see which staff was interested. And so just reach out to them and find out if they have the vouchers or if they've signed up for those and we can get them to you. Now, one voucher is for one practice test. So there are five total tests in the practice test series. So if you wanted to take all five, you would need at least five vouchers. The great thing about it is they do not expire, which is fantastic. I've seen some teachers just wanna take the subject manner in which they teach. And of course we have some areas that teach all subjects. And so they want multiple ones and that is available for you. So just reach out to your consortium manager. And the last slide, please. So what, if you wanna learn more, like I mentioned, we have some webinars coming up. So our high set practice test discussion in September, we're going to talk about that math and science on the 14th and as well the reading, the writing, the social studies on the 19th. And then in October, we have a three week series deep dive webinars. And we're going to really get into the subject matter of reading social studies and science on that Monday the 10th. And then writing's going to be Monday, October 24th, and then math on Monday, October 31st. Up top, you'll see a link for a comparison chart that has been provided. So if you want to take a look at some time when you are free to see a side-by-side -side of the GED and high set as well. And we really hope to see you at those webinars and just get your input. And thanks so much.
This is Julie, and I'm really excited to announce two uh, pilots for this upcoming programming year. One of them is the online statewide training courses. This is new, and what we're doing is promoting uh, four courses or training courses across the state. They will all be online um, in their healthcare core, Microsoft Office Specialist, paraprofessional preparation and tease prep. Um, these will all be available to any student across the state. And currently the only training course that is running is the healthcare core course. And the link is in the chat. If you are interested in referring a learner to that course, um, you can go to that link and get more information. As the other courses begin, and you can start referring learners to them, you will be receiving information from our office. We will be sending out an email that will describe um, the different ways to enroll learners and how to access more information about each class. And that email uh, will be coming relatively soon by the end of August, hopefully. Next slide, please. The second pilot is ability to benefit. And this is a pilot that's being run in conjunction with Minnesota State uh, Colleges. Ability to benefit has been around for years, but it is very underutilized in Minnesota. Uh, they, the, the federal government uh, took it away for several years and then it was brought back with the condition that a learner can do this if they are a part of a, an adult career pathway. And so what this does is allows a learner to access uh, student federal student financial aid, for instance, Pell, uh, to pay for post secondary education and training, you know, even if they do not have a high school diploma or equivalency. The goal here, though, is to do this um, together so that by the time they get that post secondary credential, they also will have their um, high school diploma. Next slide, please. So there's three ways that a person can access ability to benefit. So if you have learners that are currently preparing for GED, high set adult diploma, you should be also looking at this if they're interested in pursuing post-secondary. So the three ways that they can access ability to benefit is if they complete six credits um, towards a degree, or if they pass an exam approved by the US Department of Education and in Minnesota, that's the AccuPlacer. And then the third um, option is what is currently being piloted in Minnesota. And if you could go to the next slide, please. And this is a state process approved by the US Secretary, Secretary of Education. This process has been submitted. Uh, we're hoping to receive approval by the beginning of this upcoming year. And again, this requires a partnership between Minnesota State Colleges and ABE programs. And I know that a lot of these already exist. And if there's a career pathway um, that you have with a local community college, um, this pilot would be um, something that you should consider uh, participating in. And you can contact me if you would like more information on it. Thanks, Julie. At this point, we want to remind you of some of the key tools and supports that are available to you as we head into this next school year. And one of the, the key ways that students and partners learn about our programs is through the Adult Literacy Hotline. So as we head into the new school year, want to make sure that you ensure that all of your class and program information is accurate in SID because that is what populates 
the hotline. And then the information in the hotline is used to populate CareerForce and a variety of other directories. So if you need a reminder on um, best ways to keep your program intro updated or some thoughts about how to use the hotline, there's a great poster session. You can head over to that to get some additional information. We also have some new outreach resources available to you this year. Literacy Action Network has developed an excellent toolkit of outreach and marketing materials. So in this toolkit, you can find recruitment materials, planning tools, templates for use in both social media and paper-based flyers, um, stock phrases in a variety of languages and some beautiful photos that were taken at a number of different ABE sites here in Minnesota that you can use in your materials um, to represent the learners that we serve. So in the next couple of slides, you can see um, what the templates, some of the templates look like and the final product of these flyers, um, as well as some of the stock phrases that are available in a variety of different languages that you can use in your recruitment materials. So thank you so much to Literacy Action Network and to the programs that hosted um, the photographer to get those beautiful photographs and encourage you to all um, take a look and think about how you can use these to bring more students into your programs. Also wanna remind folks that you have your support network here available to um, support you in a variety of areas. You can see the list of the different uh, programs and providers that are funded through our Supplemental Service Grant Program. They are here to support you and your program. Please take advantage of their services. Um, you can find out about professional development opportunities that they offer through our Minnesota Adult Education PD calendar and by um, checking out our ABE Connect newsletter that comes out Every Tuesday, um, it's compiled by Atlas and is sent um, from Neil's email address. And you can find links to register for events and every other week, a variety of articles about excellent resources out there to support you. Also wanna make sure that people are aware of our FY23 PD dates document. So the, the PD calendar has information about events that are currently open for registration. If you want a snapshot view of everything that's planned and scheduled to date for the year as you plan for your own professional development calendar, check out that um, spreadsheet um, so you can see what's being planned into the winter and the spring. And then finally, I uh, encourage you to continue the conversations that you start here at Summer Institute uh, throughout the year with your colleagues from around the state via our Minnesota Adult Education Network on Mighty Networks. There are a variety of groups that you can join to connect with other educators and administrators, and there's a link in the chat about how to get connected to that network. So we hope to see you there. I'm going to turn things back over to Brad um, to talk about our year ahead. Thank you so much, Astrid, and thanks to the rest of the adult education team. Yeah, let's talk about what does it mean to revitalize adult education in our year ahead? Like we've said before, we see you working hard. We see your programming evolving. We see you finding new ways to reach and serve adult students while still serving those um, in traditional ways um, that need that uh, traditional service with that model. So we see a variety of programming models and a variety of content evolving um, in, our, in our programs. And we also see many of our current and potential students' expectations evolving. And so that forces us to adapt um, while still making sure that we help each other as staff recuperate and rejuvenate. So how can we do that over the next year? Well, let's talk about the four R's. Um, new than the uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic, let's talk about refocusing, rejuvenating, renewing, and reflecting so that we can revitalize adult education for students and staff. And let's dive into each of these R's. First on refocusing, we wanna make sure First and foremost in our system, at the state level and at the program level and at the individual level, we are prioritizing learners and staff, both current and potential, to build and sustain engagement, incorporating both learners' voices and staff voices and their needs to help us analyze what we do and how we do it and make decisions on what we do and how we do it, utilizing an equity lens. So what does that mean? 
So we see some examples of student perspectives. Um, hashtag I am ABE has shared some great, has collected some great student feedback and shared some great student feedback. And they're gonna be sharing that on their website as well as in social media. Um, here's just one example of a student asking in terms of what they would like to see change in adult education. They would like to see clear pathways to jobs and to higher education articulated within our adult education programs. We also hear from staff from each of you saying, we want you, you were saying you want to reach more students, you want to engage more deeply with students, um, you're, you want to see your, your enrollment increase in your programs. We also see you um, saying that there's a lot of positions that are unfilled and that certain that there are positions that are underpaid. And we want to, you want to see a field full of sustainable positions with livable wages. We hear you saying that you want sufficient and accessible funding to provide comprehensive programming. We know here at the Minnesota Department of Education, we've had some real big struggles and we apologize about that. We've had some major turnover in some of our areas and that's that's hurt our grants and going out in a timely way and, and with our finance and reporting. And so we apologize and we're working with our, our finance and, and grants teams to make sure that we can uh, reduce that those delays and make sure that we get over some of those hiccups and to better serve you. We're also hearing you say that you're just asking some big quick, big picture questions, like what is the future of our field? What is the future of adult education here in Minnesota? And that is a really important question that we should reflect on and that we should continue to discuss. So that's some information that we're getting from students and from staff. So what are we doing at the Minnesota Department of Education with it? We have a responsibility to utilize this information. So we're utilizing this feedback to help us determine what legislative changes we propose to MDE leadership and to the governor. We are utilizing this information to work with the AB support network to inform our professional development efforts. We're also utilizing this information to shape our conversations, whether it be with you, with our partners, or with our others, and to shape our conversations and priorities over the year. And we're utilizing this, uh, this feedback to ensure that we're applying an equity lens to our policies and procedures and asking some critical questions to ensure educational equity. This is a good time to remind all of you who have been in the system, or maybe those of you that are new, that we as a team at the adult, uh, as an adult education team at the Minnesota Department of Education have developed an equity statement on how we operate. And so our state adult education office is committed to creating educational equity. And we have four commitments with that statement. Um, and one is to we commit to recognizing the historical conditions and barriers that have prevented opportunity and success in learning for students based on their race, based on their class, and based on other identities. We commit to working to dismantle the belief in a hierarchy of human value with a focus on racial equity. We commit to fostering positive and effective learning environments for all by eliminating institutional policies that uphold oppressive systems of power and privilege. We also commit to collaboratively creating a learning community within, within the adult education system that promotes opportunities for self-reflection, for growth, and for change, because we see adult education as key to building educated, engaged, and just communities for all Minnesotans. So now let's talk about the second R, rejuvenate. And rejuvenate means to explore ways for yourself and with your colleagues to truly recuperate and to re-energize. So there's a couple ways that we see you doing this or that you can do this. First is our motivation. And it's not surprising, our number one motivation in adult education is our students. Uh, our students are what motivate us to do the work we do, said one of our uh, survey responses. Also, we heard people talking about the passion. They're, motiv they're motivated by the passion they feel to help people, to help create better lives for themselves and for their families. And we really appreciate those motivations. Um, but rejuvenation is more than motivation. It's also about prioritizing ourselves. Please keep yourself and your mental health as a priority. We've seen a lot of people really struggling with mental health over the last couple of years um, and even beyond that. So if you know of someone who is struggling, please reach out for help. And Marisa has put in the chat some mental health resources that are available on the Panda website. This is so important as we rejuvenate. Our third R is to revitalize adult education through renew. 
renew by uh, evaluating and adapting sustainable and successful models locally and statewide that include in-person, hybrid, high flex, and distance education models that teaches content and skills that learners are wanting. We received a story from Metro North that told where they said that distance learning has really helped their site grow. And that's been, and they've been so encouraged by the work that they've done. Their numbers and participation have increased dramatically to the point where they said, we couldn't actually serve this many students just with our in-person programming. We physically don't have the space. And so it's really helped some of their students who are parents, who are older, who are working various schedules, like with ride sharing, uh, who are temporarily visiting family in other states or countries, and those who are taking care of family members. So they really appreciate this flexibility in instruction. And we know that not everyone works best with distance learning, which is why in-person and high flex and hybrid models are also important too. And our final R is to reflect, to both think and talk about what have you learned over the last couple of years and why you continue to work in this amazing field of adult education. Students remind us of this every day. Here's one great example from Hiawatha Valley Adult Education, Susanna. Susanna is a fantastic young mother of three. The youngest is just five months who struggled in school due to language as well as other issues. She started her new uh, job at a bank the other at the day of this picture. Um, and they celebrated at Hiawatha Valley with cupcakes. She was so excited to wear that gown. Before she left, they discussed how they can better help her get started in college, as well as um, while well, they can help her in college if needed. She knows she wants to be in the baking industry, so she knows she's looking for like an accounting and business uh, career pathway and, and certificates and, and diplomas. So we're really excited to see our students reminding us of why we do what we do. We also have photographs that remind us of what we do. Um, this is a, a beautiful story from Northwest Service Cooperative. They received a photograph of a young woman wearing a cap and gown. They didn't know the woman's name. This, the photograph just simply stated on the back, 1989 Minnesota GED diploma, 1991 Northwest ABE high school diploma, 2016 Metropolitan State University Bachelor of Arts. On the back side, she hand wrote the following message. Thank you for supporting lifelong learning. My academic journey is possible because of the existence of organizations which support education in all environments. That is a big, wonderful statement. Her photograph continues to hang in their ABE office as a reminder of this 27 year journey from GED to becoming a college graduate as inspiration during those times when staff get frustrated at the pace maybe or the path of our, our learners may be taking. Um, and it motivates us to persist in helping adult, uh, adult learners meet their fullest potential. Thank you to all of you that have shared stories. We have a couple other stories that we um, want to share in the chat. First, we have some stories, um, exciting stories from Fergus Falls um, that have been in the media. We also have some exciting stories from inter, uh, story from International Institute of Minnesota, um, where they were recently featured in the media as well. Um, it's so exciting to see our programs and our adult learners um, highlighted and their journeys highlighted. And I want to hear from you because there's so much more to share. As we close out today, what have you been reflecting on? with your work in adult education. What would you like to share about working in adult education? Please share your thoughts in the chat. If you have any stories or just anything you'd like to add about your reflections in adult education, please share them now. As you're typing this, your, your stories that you'd like to share, I just want to stay and our entire adult education team wants to say, we really look forward to this year's journey with you. We've got a lot of work ahead, but we've got a lot of meaningful and, and exciting work ahead. And we've got exciting support with each and every one of you. So thank you for all of the work that you do. Thank you for all of the work that we are going to do together. Um, Karen, thank you for sharing your thoughts as well. Mankato ABE is the best place to work, period. <laughs> And now we might get some competitive uh, responses from some of our other programs too. <laughs> 
So thank you all so much for your for all of your important work. Thank you, and we're excited to see you as we uh, move ahead throughout this year. Have a great summer institute.